I get my best advice from a skinwalker, in the forgotten stretch of the woods, where even the bravest souls dare not tread, I found my unlikely mentor. A skinwalker with a twisted sense of humor. It started one stormy night when my car decided to breathe its last rite beside the old Navajo cemetery. As I trudged through the rain, cursing my luck, a voice slithered out from the shadows. Need some help, buddy? Startled, I turned to see a creature, humanoid, but not quite human, with eyes that gleamed with mischief. It was a skinwalker, a being of legend, capable of wearing skins, human or animal, changing shape at will. The stories had always painted them as malevolent, but this one just seemed bored. Unless you've got AAA under that skin, I joked nervously. I don't see how... AAA for the soul, maybe. I give advice. It interrupted, grinning with far too many teeth. Desperation makes you do crazy things, like taking life advice from a creature of nightmares. All right, I sighed. What should I do about my dead-end job? Chase what excites you. If that fails, scare it into submission. It cackled. Advice sessions with my eerie advisor became a regular thing. I'd bring pizza. Weirdly, it loved pineapple. And it'd dish out wisdom like a fur-covered Yoda. Sometimes it would morph into people I knew, mimicking them comically while offering insight. Your boss, it would say in a perfect imitation, needs to be reminded of your worth. Or just remind him you know a skinwalker. I laughed more than I expected. It was like having a therapist who could eat you, but chose to chat instead. Things at work did improve, strangely enough. Maybe it was the newfound confidence or the odd feeling that something supernatural had my back. I even got a raise after I casually mentioned my friend in the woods during a meeting. Love life advice was trickier. Wear their skin was its first suggestion, which I vetoed with a shudder. Fine, fine, it relented. Just be yourself, or an improved version. Compliments are key, and if you ever need a doppelganger for a date you're not feeling, I'm your entity. I didn't take it up on that offer. Time passed, and I started to see the creature not as a monster, but as a quirky inhabitant of a world parallel to ours. It had stories that would make your skin crawl, sure, but it also had a perspective that was, frankly, invaluable. One day, I asked the question that had been nagging me. Why me? Why help me? It shifted uncomfortably, an odd sight for such a fearsome being. Because, human, even skinwalkers get lonely. And maybe, just maybe, we're not so different. We both wear many skins in our lives, trying to find where we fit. That hit harder than I expected. Here was this ancient creature, feared and misunderstood, and it was, uh, lonely. It taught me that understanding can come from the most unexpected places. But all things must come to an end. One evening, I went to our usual spot, and it wasn't there. I waited, but the woods remained silent. I never saw my bizarre advisor again. I still drive past the cemetery sometimes, half expecting to see a familiar monstrous figure waiting with a smirk. I never do, but I'm grateful for the strange friendship we formed. Uh, I got a promotion, found love, and learned more about myself than I could have imagined, all thanks to advice from a skinwalker. And sometimes, when life gets too serious, I remember its favorite joke. How many skinwalkers does it take to change a light bulb? Just one. But the light bulb has to want to change. Creepy. Absolutely. But... I wouldn't change a thing.